the Rebbe was living in Paris, and the Rebbe ran away from the Nazis right before Schwarz, a whole year earlier, 1940. He arrived after Schwarz in 1941. And he moved to the south of France. The Nazis only occupied northern France. Southern France, they had what they called the Vichy government, and then there was Italian France. Um, and, and Jews felt a little safer. I mean, I don't know if it was safe the whole war, I don't know if it was safe. In fact, the Jews felt a little safer, so they ran away from Nazi-occupied France. And, um, and he went into the embassy or the consulate, the United States embassy, and he said, listen, I got, I have um, visas to come to the United States. And the ambassador or the counselor was playing games with him. And he was not going to let that ever come to America, even though they ever had a visa. So this Rabinowitz on the American side figured this out, and the Rebbe was cable to move to a different city. So he moved, I think, from Marseille to Nice. Could be from Nice to Marseille. You could look it up. So he moved, and in a very short time, his visa was cleared, and he came to New York, came to America. Um, so this Oscar Rabinowitz saved the Rebbe's life. But that a chateva, there were other people as well. So the Rebbe, the previous Rebbe, writes to his father. I want you to know my son-in-law came today. Please tell your son. It was very important to him. The other part of the story, which is incredibly compelling, is it was a Monday, like today. The same exact fias. It was a Monday. Chav Chasim was on a Monday. And the Rebbe told the story that when he got off the ship, so first of all, the previous Rebbe sent a whole bunch of people to, to greet him, to meet the Rebbe when the Rebbe came off the ship. The story that's, it's a true story. I heard from Rabbi Groner myself. And Rabbi Groner was a bar mitzvah boy. Rabbi Groner from Australia was 13 years old. That's how long ago this was. And he was standing outside the previous Rebbe's room with his father, Aleyah Mashalim, to go into the previous Rebbe. This is 1941 for Yechidus for the bar mitzvah. And three men woke out of the previous Rebbe's room. One of them was Rabbi Jacobson. One of them was Rabbi Kazanovsky. I don't know who the third was. And they were very moved. They were clearly very moved. Something happened in that room that was very moving. And they saw Rabbi Groner's father. Rabbi Groner's father was a very special Jew. Remot Chagroni was a very beautiful, beautiful, really, really. A, you look at his picture, he looks like a, a tzaddik. Mom is like a holy man. Rabbi Groner's father. And then Remot you know what the Rebbe just told us? The Rebbe said, tomorrow my son-in-law is coming. And I want you to go greet him at the port. But I want you to know who you're going to greet. So he said to them, He's a Bucky, he knows by heart the Shas Babli and the Rishami, the Babylonian Shas and the Rishami, and all the Midrashim and the Zayar, all Sifri Kabbalah. And the Lakuta Teda with all the sources, Lakuta Teda is thousands and thousands of sources from the most obscure books. Lakuta Teda with all the sources. And, and he said he wears his hat, Dafka down, you know, he wears the fedora, the Rebbe didn't dress with an Abanish dress, and under his hat he has the whole Shas Babli and the Rishami. He says every night he does chutzos, he mourns for the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash. Three o'clock in the morning he's never asleep, either he's not gone to sleep yet or he's already woken up. And it was very exciting for them to hear this, and they went to greet the Rebbe. So the Rebbe had publicly said, I couldn't decide what should I do first. Should I first come to 770 or should I first go to the mikveh? To go into a Rebbe without going to a mikveh is not appropriate, he'd been on a ship for 11 days. There was no mikvah on the ship, right? I, I guess there was a mikvah, but it wasn't so easy to use. Um, and he says, to go into the Rebbe without mikvah, I couldn't. But if the Rebbe wants to see me, then I'm not going to make the Rebbe wait. So the Rebbe said, I couldn't make up my mind. Should I go to mikvah? Should I not go to mikvah? So the Rebbe said, in the end, it didn't matter. Because the Rebbe wouldn't see us for three days. They arrived on a Monday. The previous Rebbe didn't see them until Thursday. And the Rebbe explained why. The Fiedekeb was not in the best of health. The Fiedekeb by nature was an incredibly emotional man. I've heard many people describe much, much more emotional than our Rebbe was. The Fiedekeb used to cry in a way that I never cry, really didn't cry. And he would laugh. Fiedekeb would giggle, would laugh in a way that our Rebbe was much, much more, I don't know what the right word is, controlled, reserved, reticent. But he was a very emotional man and he was simply worried about his health. And the Rebbe had the, had the moichen, had the presence of mind, had the strength of character to wait until he felt like he had sufficiently calmed down before he would see them. So he waited till Thursday to see them. And when he saw them, they went in separately. All this the Rebbe said in the and that's how I know. The Rebbe repeated this in the Fabrengen. The Rebbe went in alone. The Rebbe's wife, the Friedrich Rebbe's daughter, went in first. 
and spent some time with her father. I don't know what they discussed, none of my business, right? And then the Rebbe went in. Yeah. And during those three days, um, for the next few weeks actually, the Rebbe and the Rebbetson moved into what is now the Rebbe's office. That's where they lived. They put two beds in that room and they were hoping to make for them accommodations in 770, but after a few weeks they took an apartment on President in New York. Um, so the Rebbe said this. He said, the Rebbe de Shver, this I just need to tell you this. The Rebbe de Shver does nish The previous Rebbe, or my father-in-law, the Rebbe, wouldn't see me till Thursday. That night, that Monday night, we stayed up all night talking. All of them. That means the Rebbe and the Rebetzin and their mother-in-law and their sister-in-law and their brother-in-law and their nephew. They spent the whole night. The family, the, the, the nucleus, the previous Rebbe's children sat the whole night talking to the Rebbe and the Rebetzin. And then the Rebbe says, Ah! In Kleinigkeit. The kingdoms are gerated for the Nazis, as the Rebbe said. Ah! No small thing. The children were spared, were saved from the Nazis. No, the previous Rebbe had a third daughter who didn't make it. She was killed in Treblinka. And the Rebbe and the Rebbe said, came. That's why the Rebbe said, Ah, we spent a whole night just chatting, schmoozing. In Kleinikai, the kingdoms of Hirat. Can you imagine? Children came from the Nazis. The rest of the story, I mean, the story is never going to end, right? But the Chsidim saw the Rebbe. And the Rebbe, you know how the Rebbe looked. Incredibly neat. Very, very useful. Just gorgeous. I mean, the Rebbe's physical countenance made your head turn. He was so beautiful, physically beautiful. There was such a beautiful man. Um, and the beauty was the inner beauty. You could see that this was not an ordinary man. You looked at the Rebbe's face, even when the Rebbe was 80. The Rebbe, the Rebbe, the Rebbe's, at the age of 80, the Rebbe was physically incredibly beautiful to look at. Physically, Pasha, gorgeous. It's a holiness. And 40 years before that, he was also very beautiful. Um, but he had no airs, you know, no noise, no tumult, and his gestures were very exact, very efficient, very quick. They walked in and walked out, did what he had to do, didn't waste any time. Um, and you had to observe him, you know, you had to observe him. So the Chassidim asked the Rebbe if the Rebbe would fabring, would, would lead a gathering. So the Rebbe said, until I see the Rebbe, until I see my father-in-law, I'm still on the boat. This is, I'm not here. And the Rebbe made him wait three days. So from Monday to Thursday, the Rebbe waited to see the previous Rebbe. And um, a, a little sweet story happened that I think is worth to mention. There was an old chassid, then he was old, 80 years ago, he was probably in his 70s, whose name was Rebbe David Shifrin. Rebbe David Shifrin was a chassid for the Rebbe Marash, old Lubavitcher chassid, there's pictures of him, a happy Jew who lived in America for many, many years, an important man. And he had, he, he, had a, he, was, he was a real chassid. He, he had a discerning eye. You couldn't fool him. So Wednesday and Thursday is Rosh like it is this year. Wednesday and Thursday is Rosh Chedesh. And uh, Rosh Chedesh, you take off your tefillin in the middle of davening because you don't daven Musaf with tefillin. So the Rebbe, was his, his room was across the hall, you know. He put on Tal's tefillin in his room. He came into the shul to daven, and when the davening was over, went back to his room. But Rosh Chedesh, since you take off your tefillin in the middle of davening, he said the Rebbe did it in shul. And the Rebbe wore four pairs of tefillin, which is like a, it's a situation. It's a whole, you know, so people had never seen it. So everyone was ogling, they were looking at him. And probably the last time the Rebbe did it in public, because they were thinking, what's the big deal, you know? In Poland, many people had four pairs of tefillin. It was a very rare thing to observe. But it's not really four pairs, it's two pairs and an extra shalosh with each. You know, an extra shalosh with Rashi, so you take out the shalosh of Rashi, you put on a different shalosh. Then you put on the Rebbe Nutam, and you take out the shalosh of Rebbe Nutam, put on a different shalosh. And they watched the Rebbe do this in his very efficient way. You know, no noise. And Abdavid Shafin was an old man. And he stood. And he watched. And he watched. And he watched. And he watched. And he turned to the Bacharim. I heard this from Saul Gordon, Sozan Gezunt, who was a kid then. He was, must have been 12 years old or 11 years old. He turned to the boys and he says, Kindelach. I, I'm sorry, I'm so emotional. I know myself why I'm so emotional. Dos is the emes is Children, this is the real thing. This is the real thing. He watched the Rebbe put on film. That's what he said. He said, Kinderlach, this is the goods. This is the real. He was his impression. He passed away in 43. He never saw the Rebbe be a Rebbe. But he, he got the Rebbe by watching him, watching him put on film.